Kamikoto makes fantastic and beautiful steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan. Kamikoto only uses steel sourced from mills in Japan, and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knifesmiths. Indeed, it takes years to manufacture these knives through a rigorous 19-step process, and each finished knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. Each knife comes in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box, ideal for correct storage or for giving as a gift. I've been using the three-piece Kanpeki knife set that contains a vegetable, slicing, and utility knife. The knives sit comfortably in my hand and are light and very well balanced. It's easy to see why Kamikoto knives are used by several chefs at Michelin-starred restaurants. Kamikoto is currently offering $50 off any purchase you make with the discount code MarkFelton. So click on the link below or go to kamikoto.com slash markfelton and use the code markfelton to save an extra $50 today. D-Day, June 6, 1944, saw soldiers, sailors and airmen from the United States, Great Britain, Canada and France and several other nations storm the Normandy beaches. But among those who were supposed to land was an unusual group that few have ever heard of in connection with Operation Overlord. Firefighters. That's right. Originally, the plan was to include a contingent of civilian firemen, partly dressed in military uniforms, bringing with them their fire engines. The question is, why? The reason is actually very simple and eminently logical. To put out fires. War is, by its very nature, an ugly and destructive business, and in order to invade and liberate France, the Allies had to cause a lot of damage to defeat the occupying Germans. Allied planes bomb French cities to hamper the German transport system. Allied warships pounded enemy fortifications, many sighted among French towns and villages, and once landed, Allied forces fought fierce battles against Germans in those same towns and villages. Under such circumstances, the local fire brigades were often out of action, their men scattered and their equipment damaged and destroyed. Even small residential fires left unattended could result in huge swathes of settlements being burned down. So the British came up with an ingenious solution. Simply land British firemen and their appliances behind the invading forces to help control the fires and help French civilians save their settlements. In March 1944, the call had gone out to Britain's National Fire Service, the wartime firefighting organization that had performed so well during the Blitz and subsequent German bombing campaigns on Britain. A new unit was created, the NFS Overseas Contingent of men aged between 19 and 41. So many firemen applied that only the best were selected, remembering that this civilian force was to enter an active combat zone. The overseas contingent wore standard NFS uniforms with British Army steel helmets, webbing and gaiters, plus army boots. No weapons training was given, as these men were not expected to fight, but foreign language training was added to the programme. One vital skill that had to be mastered was embarking and disembarking fire engines and other heavy equipment from naval landing craft over beaches. What would happen if the firemen were captured by the Germans? The government decided to accord them the definition of camp followers, not soldiers but civilians attached to army units. In this way, if captured, they would be accredited prisoner of war status. Four columns of NFS overseas contingents were prepared for D-Day until the army top brass stepped in and prevented their being used in Operation Overlord. Why? Well, the army said it didn't want the responsibility of protecting unarmed firemen when busy trying to fight a war. However, all was not lost for the overseas contingents. In January 1945, column number four was sent out over to France and attached to the United States 12th Army Group. The Americans, like the other allies, had been hampered by fuel shortages during the advance through France following the Battle of Normandy shortages that actually enabled the Germans to pull back and regroup on the Siegfried Line along the German frontier. No fuel could be wasted or lost, and fires caused by enemy action, sabotage or accidents could be disastrous for the advancing armies. Ammunition dumps, many of them vast, were also similarly vulnerable to destruction by fire. 
Though badly overstretched, number four column of the overseas contingent was spread out amongst the U.S. 12th Army Group supply units to tackle fires, saving huge amounts of fuel and ammunition from being lost. The most northern element of number four column actually operated inside Germany at Wegberg, the most southern at Verdun in France. The British firemen would work well alongside U.S. troops and were only stood down on the 15th of July 1945, two months after the war in Europe ended. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.